Don't you hate it when you promise your wife you're not going to buy anything else for the garage, and then a week later you find something you just got to have, and then you got to figure out how you're going to pay for it and how you're going to get it in the garage without her finding out. Well, that's exactly what happened to me, and now I own a Denver Nova Mill benchtop CNC. Just kidding. I talked to her about it before I bought it. Anyway, let's take a look at it. So Denford has been making training CNC mills for schools for a really long time. Uh, this one's from 2002. And they generally have two lines of CNC mills. They have a smaller one than this that's based off, I don't know if it's a TAG or a Sure line or uh, some other similar mill, but it's a lot smaller than this. Um, this mill is fairly beefy. It's all cast iron. It's got dovetail ways. Um, the spindle housing down here is cast iron. This is sheet metal, just covers the, the pulley system. It runs an ISO 30 taper spindle. Uh, it's half horsepower, 5,000 RPM. Uh, the work envelope is 9 by 6 by 4.5. It's got roughly like a 5 and a quarter by 14 inch long table. Uh, runs stepper motors. It's got NEMA 23s on X and Y. And I think a NEMA 32 on the Z. Also, there's a, a flip down cover that these generally have, and this one was broken off, so you can see the hinges. Uh, this is where those attach. But the mill's in pretty good shape. I mean, it's got very little, there's no pock marks or crash marks on it. Uh, the ways are in good shape. There's a little bit of flaking on there. Um, I think it's just decorative for oil holding. It doesn't look like the kind of scraping that's for a super precision fit. My brother bought one a few years back and he really liked it for a small little mill and uh, so I found this one pretty close by and the price was reasonable so I went ahead and got it. And This mill came with everything except for the cover which is broken and there's no software for it. So, But I got a controller uh, right here and we can take a look at that real quick. So this here is the power supply and plugs into a standard 120 volt outlet and outputs 240 volts which goes to the control panel. The only reason the control panel needs 240 volts AC is because the spindle motor is 180 volts DC and so you gotta start at 240 AC to be able to rectify down to 180 DC. Most of the other electronics in here are 24 volts DC with a few exceptions. So let's power it up see if we can make it do something. So here's a peek inside the control panel I pulled off all the covers so I could kind of see where all the wires are going. There's a pretty good documentation for this in the Denford forums and my printer is just cranking out you know, a couple dozen pages of schematics and diagrams and stuff. There's an external transformer 120 to 240 that comes in through this disconnect here and makes its way through a, a filter there and comes in and split off into three circuits so it branches off one goes to the spindle, one goes to this control transformer, so each of those get 240. The spindle control doesn't have to have 240, there's a jumper here for uh, 120, but the problem is you're going to have half your power. And uh, So anyway, this right here takes, uh, it's a multi-tap for different inputs. So technically if, if I wanted to go away with a weaker motor, I could get rid of the external transformer and just run everything off. 120 volts, just plug it in any wall outlet and not have to deal with the box. Um, the other option is do away with the transformer and just plug it in to the same outlet that I use for the welder and the lathe and do away with the external box. But I think it, it might be kind of handy to have that uh, step up transformer because that way I can plug it in anywhere and don't have to tie up uh, more than one machine on one circuit. I'm already going to have to do that a little bit between the bridge port and the Monarch. So anyway, just a quick little tour. Uh, here's the control board. Uh, this is not going to be reused. Uh, the, there's, it actually plugs on this board behind. The board behind here is basically stepper control. So this transformer is giving power uh, to this board. It's got a built-in full wave bridge rectifier. Uh, it's got discrete, some sort of switching transistors and, and three little um, ICs there. So I'm sure it's very crude yet rugged implementation of a stepper motor driver. Um, modern stepper drivers you can get little integrated circuits, they're super tiny. So this one, supposedly all the motors are roughly 2 amp motors 
and there's a giant chunk of aluminum uh, cooling these things off right here. So um, probably be able to reuse some portions of this, but uh, it, it will be kind of handy. All these wires are just going to basically unplug and plug into a different control board, and then I can I can either choose to reuse these stepper drivers or I can go with um, some other sort of upgrade option. The only real troublesome thing is spindle control because this board down here is not an isolated board. It's got high voltage all over it. And so uh, back here on this rear panel underneath this board, I think, I'm not sure because I haven't taken it apart, is an opto isolation circuit where this sends a 5 volt pulse width modulated input into this board. And then this board uh, has an isolated section where it converts that to a 10 volt output for spindle speed. So I need a way to translate uh, if I go to a different controller it's probably not going to have a 0 to 10 volt output that's isolated. So I'll either need a breakout board just for that signal or or if I can tap into this board and reuse that circuit it'll be a lot cheaper because I won't have to buy anything else. So right now the plan is go to the different control board. Um, if I reuse this that's fine. This and this can stay. If not I'm going to put a bigger 24 volt power supply in to power um, some stepper drivers that I put in somehow control the spindle and the rest is just interlocks and safeties and that sort of thing so I can real quick power it on it turns on I don't know what any of this means L I'm assuming is loading and then 8 you know it might be like A ready to go everything seems to work uh, as far as you know, no smoke came out. I'm gonna real quick show you. I think I found what the enable is for the spindle. So if you come down here, uh, try to do this one-handed and not electrocute myself. So getting a little closer, take a look at a safety issue. These two wires bridge are what engages the spindle. You can see I got nine volts DC on there. You might be thinking, Hey, I you know a good idea. I'll just take a paper clip, jump for those out, and see if the spindle starts. Well, the problem is, so I'm going to touch just the chassis. So you'll see I got actually 130 volts and 135. So there's a small offset between these two. So you can see this is something you don't want to touch. However, I've got some Cat 3 isolated leads, and I can jump by that out. There's a relay up here, you hear clicking, pulling in, and I got spindle power. That speed variation in the spindle is just me adjusting the override pot. So I pretty much think we're in business. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. In the next one, we'll try to take a look at this control board and figure out how we're going to make it work or what we're going to replace it with so that we can control this CNC mill with a bunch of ones and zeros. Thanks for watching.